live. What I started realizing at spending this money, I started realizing I am suffering through my job to live good for three, four days when I go home. Mm. When really I should have evened that out. I should even that out when I start feeling that way at about six, seven years. Yeah. And I should have this is what this is what should have happened. I should have went into OTR, stayed at one company for four years. Yeah. When uh trained, whatever you did at that company, stay there for four years. Four years. When I start feeling like I wanted to be home, I should have transitioned from OTR to home every weekend. Mm. Okay. Did that for for uh four or five years. Right. And then from there, I should have jumped into specialized home every day or every other day, like crane work. Right. Okay. That like should have happened. And I also, on top of that, I should have never, ever gotten to media. Hmm. Media is the single handedly thing that has destroyed my, my uh, career. Tell me more about it. Media. They, the big companies have passed my name around. Mm. So no big company will hire me. I cannot be hired at any place. Warner, I can't be hired nowhere. I but have not even, to be, not even Prime. I definitely that's not the first people that said no. The only person that will take me back that's big that has offered me to come back is CR England. That's interesting. CR England plays my videos in their training when you go, they go to get your CEO. Really? Yeah, because I mean they're happy that I'm an alumni of there. Do they compensate you for that? No, <laughs> but see, there is see yeah. the loop, the loophole is they're playing it off of YouTube, so I am compensated. They're uh, not, yeah, so they don't have to do that because it's public. Uh, now, I check with a lawyer, but they okay. are willing for me to come back and be the poster child and all that type of shit. They were talking to an insider and they were talking to me, and, mm. and they never told me a number, so I ignored it. That Gosh, I basically dude. meant I'm gonna hire you, and you're just gonna be my. My stooge they said at the door. My oh, like some of the other majors. And I ain't going to say no names, but you know who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We see you. Exactly. We know you ain't out here running. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we know We know about them views. Yeah, them views ain't organic. We know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I personally said I'm not interested, and I just yeah. never, ever even ate into it. But the truth is, anyone else? No. And the, right. it's, 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 uh, that has hurt my career, and... uh what I realized too, a lot of companies, once they find out who I am, because they always do, is what happens when I go to a company, another driver will tell their DM who I am. Mm. And they'll be like, you know, dude's famous, right? And that DM will tell their DM, yeah. you got a famous truck on your shit, right? And the first thing he'll do is put a screw to me. Mm. Oh no, no, we don't do that here. I, I noticed because they'll say stuff like this: oh, "You don't get special treatment." When so this is this is happening at at small carriers too. Happening anywhere I go, it doesn't wow. matter where I go. Only a few, like the place I'm fucking with now, is the farm. Yeah. They don't give a shit. Right. Everything's set. Yeah, that's nice, but the chicken butt ain't gonna pick itself up. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, when you're dealing with farms, they yeah. don't even promote their business on Indeed. They give no right. fuck to the internet. Yeah. You have to be in the, Out and I've there. noticed that here too. I see carriers all the time. I've never even heard of them. It's like, never heard of them. And you'll see, you know, at their spot, they got a weird hiring sign, but you're not going to see it anywhere else. No, it's it, because what point you, if I put it anywhere else, they don't live here. Right. You know, they don't live where you are. So yeah. where, where, where the fuck are they going to uh, come get you? So what, what ends up happening is like I got to tell dudes, I know y'all like to, 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 to start a media shit and I made it look fun. But the real truth is if, uh, I have to start looking at my stuff as do I have a media career or a trucking career? Hmm. Because the media career hurts the trucking career. Right. These people are not used to the drivers they fuck over having a voice. So that is not a plus to them. Mm. You think, oh, well, they can pull you in and do business. No, no, no. They don't want you to have leverage at the business table. You're supposed to be here as a driver. We only want you depending on the money you get from us so we can tell you what the fuck to do. You having your own thought process, they're gonna slow your lows down. That's crazy. When mind you, we as as we are on this wonderful platform, it's supposed to be about freedom of speech. Everybody, people who want freedom of speech are people who 
really truly believe in the doctrine that gave it to them. They're po- they're uh, patriots. Yeah, business people aren't patriots. Business people run a thiefdom that gets them prop give them profit. If you're running a thiefdom that gets you profit, you don't want freedoms at all. You want profit. Mm. So if you're dealing with TB at your mega carrier place and you do some shitty shit to him and he goes online and complains, he's in complaining to a hundred thousand people. Yeah. That's a hundred thousand and and his platform, everybody's CDL drivers. Right. You do not want someone complaining to a hundred thousand potential employees. So what you what do you do? You freeze them out. Yep. I mean, fortunately, I'm at a place where they also don't care as long as they don't bring their name up. So I'm safe in that regard. But I yeah, agree. and you're in a place that's so niched yeah. that it wouldn't matter what you said the fuck anyway. Exactly. Ninety <laughs> percent like, of the like let me tell you hired here yeah. anyway. Yeah, I'm so I'm so niche. I literally have three coworkers. <laughs> They're not worrying about the internet, bro. And also yeah. that 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 also affects where I live. Yeah. So yeah, I'm enjoying Texas, but I can't live in the Texas y'all know. I gotta live in the Texas y'all don't even drive by. Yeah. Because if I live in the Texas that y'all know, all of those companies know who I am. So it's like fuck, man. What? The, that's why I say the worst thing I've ever done. Not to my life, because I'm happy with what I've done. I'm happy with the choices I've made. But if someone's coming up to me saying, how do you I pop in, 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 in YouTube? The first thing I have to stop them and say is, first of all, we need to discuss why you want to pop into YouTube. Mm-hmm. Because this will hurt your driving career. So if you're depending on your driving career to pay your bills, you do not need to do this. And if you do do it, you better be as you better be fucking like a, a Disney channel. <laughs> you can never take a political stand on anything. Yeah. Either way, left yeah. or right, you can never say what happened wrong to you. You you have to come on and be like, oh guys, say we're doing this and this that happy day. And then one of the good things about being a trucker is that's all you can do. And guess what's gonna happen with that? You're not gonna give views. Because truckers don't want to hear that shit. No. I mean, they're for the most part, I would believe, regardless of race, that you know, truckers for the most part are conservative, but in newer, younger generations, you know, they, they believe in the internet. That yeah. doesn't necessarily, you know, give to one political affiliation or the other, but yeah, they believe in the internet and the internet tells you, you gotta, you know, you gotta be balling out of control. You gotta look a certain way. You gotta spend a certain way. If you're not at this certain stature, you ain't nothing, you know, and nobody cares about the blue collar people, which is who we are. Right, and none of them want to be blue collar. So they they look at it as well. Trucking got me to get into media, and uh, I'll do something after that. No, you won't. No, not at all. If you come into this game as a trucking influencer, you will leave as a trucking influencer. And trust and trust and believe. If you felt the need to enter this industry, you obviously didn't have anything else going on. Because I too many times people, oh, I'm only going to do this for two years and I'm going to do something else. And if and more time, and I mean ninety five percent of the time, if you're not transitioning to another type of skilled labor, you're not getting out, bro. Yeah, you have to because you're not going to want to a take the pay cut to do something else, or b take the time it takes to actually learn a viable skill to make a decent income. And then on top of the fact that you're having to compete with everybody else that was already starting where you're trying to go in the first place. Yeah, if you do it, you 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 better have a significant savings because what yeah. you'll realize about every other industry, you got to do two years broke. Yeah, you got to take and a not you got to take a eighteen dollar an hour job while you're studying to get the certification. Then once you get the certification, you got to figure out uh, how to smooth on Indeed or or, or something like that. Or what do they call it? Uh, uh, LinkedIn. You got to figure out how to smooth. Oh, yeah. Then you realize when you get over there, you're used to a merit merit based job system. Yeah, when you no, step yeah. out of long distance companies, it is no longer merit based. It is yeah. if you get that person to say yes. It's what your resume say. We're not even used to using resumes. Oh yeah, man, and that's been something that's been happening a lot in industry, like the job I got. Now again, I had to. <laughs> it was basically a forty five day process to get this job. Now I had savings, so I was able to float it. That that was not an issue, but. Yeah, to get this job that I have now, which, like I said, I like my job. It's great. I mean, I'd be tired of it sometimes, but I mean, it's a good job for what it is. But yeah, I had to go through a 45-day process. I initially had to deal with a third-party hiring agency that they had 
I had to essentially get hired by their person before I was even able to approach the actual company and then go through the same process again of them checking my history. I had to actually put together a resume to give to them and then them asking me why I transitioned from each of the jobs that I've had. And then from that, deciding if they wanted to deal with me or not. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's more than what we're used to doing. We're used to just shooting up on every Right. And tell it happened inside the dough. <laughs> like it's it's yeah. a bucket. <laughs> and realize is when you do that, that's usually a shitty job. Yeah. All the jobs that you would want require effort to get into. Yeah. And they all have something you don't want to do. Oh yeah, I mean you can name some things like like what what you said uh, uh overnight uh you dock know, work type of yeah warehouse work forklift experience yep breaking pallets down all those jobs you see of those dudes that are home they're fucking doing some shit that you wouldn't do yeah like when I got this job I had I had no forklift experience I had to learn how to drive a forklift exactly and my thing is I rebuke the notion of me touching a forklift I would not be touching a forklift from a driver <laughs> not at all yeah. I'm not doing yeah. that. Me personally, that offends me. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I don't want to touch nobody's forklift. I don't want to do none of that shit. I'm a driver. I want to be hired to drive. Right. That's why you know these. I'm just, I'm looking to switch industries, uh, soon, because all of the jobs worthwhile for you to go local. They want other shit out of you. They believe driving ain't enough. They're hiring you for three positions. They're hiring oh, you yeah. for a dock worker. An in warehouse guy, and then they're hiring you for a hand to hand delivery person on top of being class A long distance. So they're I mean, hiring you for a UPS position, a dock yeah. worker position, a warehouse, all in one position. Yeah, I was going to say because, like, with, with my job, mind you, I make more than most people in my area, which is cool. I can live cheap, I can do what I got to do. But yeah, I do inventory management, I, you know, refill the products that we sell, I do warehousing with the forklift, and then on the route days, I deliver it to customers. Yeah, that's four. Which, in, which includes, you know, shuffling barrels, picking up kegs, boxes, you know, pumping bulk products. Like, it's it's a lot. In the days of old, there would have been a person at each one of those places. Oh, yeah. One of them things you pointed, it would have been a separate person. But they have figured out that, why do I need to have a person at this location when I can make the driver do it when he gets there? Yeah. Why do I need to have office? Why do I need warehouse dudes just sitting around when I can make the drivers first two hours of their day is load their truck? So you come in, you clock in, you order, pick your shit, put it onto your truck, make sure it's locked down, drive it to where it's going. That place doesn't have anybody because they sold the account on, oh, our driver will do it. So they don't even have a person there. So then when you get there, you got to take it off the truck. You got to bring it inside. You got to break down the freaking pallet. Then it's like you have one guy doing four people's job. Yep. And you're paying that. Oh, oh, so we we pay good. We pay $90,000. Well, actually, you don't. Really, each one of these positions are $45,000 to $55,000 worth of people. So I'm doing $200,000 worth of employee work. From one job exactly and your key and, and each one of these people are making the company a million dollars so if you break it down in what profit each one of those positions do they're making two million dollars a year off of a person they're giving ninety thousand dollars a year before taxes easily it's fucking diabolical yeah i'm sorry i meant to say that they work lion hall jobs are hidden gems facts that's why I tell you, it's one of those things where it's like, I wouldn't mind, you know, and this home every weekend shit, that's a big city thing. Y'all got to stop throwing that out there like the whole country has that available. They don't. Yeah. That's you're near a major city hub to be home every weekend. That means so much freight is moving through there. They just need someone to, to hook up to five trailers a week and end up back at home on Friday. You got to have a lot of shit going on for them to hire you just for that. So if and more get, times than not, you're you're still taking a pay hit to even get that. Right, because they know you want it. Yeah. And like simple, they'll, they'll leverage paying you less for the fact that you get to come home. Bingo. You coming home is your pay. Yeah. But now it's like, yeah, you'll take $1,400 for taxes, which is basically $1,100 a month. $1,100 oh. a week. Because I've, 
I've looked at so many job listings where they offer both, you know, cross country OTR and the local. And I guarantee you 95% of the time that the local or excuse me, not the local, but the uh, home every weekend is going to pay significantly less than full OTR. Like you'll have the OTR guy getting paid, you know, 65, 70 cents a mile. And then you have the weekend guy getting paid 50 to 55. Right. Basically, it's that simple. So yeah. don't think I'm going to go home and be balling. The only way you're going to go home and be making decent money is if you get a hazmat. That's a yeah. lot. I know places that don't require hazmat that say hazmat to get that level of driver. Just to that's not right. Ignore. Like my job, even though technically hazmat is required i really don't haul anything hazardous other than just for example window wash which i mean it's window wash only it's, the only reason it's hazardous because it has ethanol in it but it's not a real dangerous not, product. the only thing is they just want that level of driver yeah that's it they think hazmat drivers took a little bit more thought process to get a hazmat they're better drivers generally speaking yes and that that's that 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 is crazy to me because i have better records than the people i know who have a hazmat I've this never had an accident and I've never had a ticket. This is true. I mean, I wish, you, I wish you had it, but you know, that's, you know, yeah. you have your reasons because yeah. <laughs> you I'm, are, you I'm are sorry. of the quality to, to have that endorsement. Do, do not like burning to death. So I don't want one. Hey, and there's uh, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> my thing is I can work. Yeah. RGNs, step decks, low boys, regular flatbeds, conus, conestogas, tankers i've done uh oil field work i hate conestogas by the way oh they suck they suck, oh, they suck. So bad. conestogas i can tarp i can run a pto i got all this it don't all oh, you need a hazmat for fucking what dude you drop Bro. off tires the fuck do you want me to have a hazmat for yeah just federal re regulation <laughs> See, my, my thing is it's not a federal regulation for you to carry tires because people drop off tires in their cars all the time that you do not need a hazmat the whole tire a tire is hazardous when you set it on fire that's a fact it's not it, i'm telling you you don't need a hazmat for that the, through federal regulations you don't they just right. want a hazmat person right which is crazy because you're not going to pay me top hazmat dollar you're not going to pay me cryogenic money Boy, who and that is the creme de la creme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you're not paying me hazmat money, why are you? That's like me having a place where I do sleep studies, mm, but okay. only surgeons can be hired. What the fuck for what? We just that like, is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's really crazy when you think about it. <laughs> it's stupid. So it's just oh, I just want yeah. that. I just feel like surgeons are better. Okay, yeah. cool. So you're gonna pay me three hundred thousand? Oh no, I don't pay that much money. You're not doing surgery. Well, then, bitch, why are you hiring me then? Exactly. <laughs> it's bullshit, bro. <laughs> it's bullshit. They think the bar is too oh, low for man. you to get your CDL. So the next thing is, oh, you know, uh, to do it. And, and and then there's a there's a niche for you not to have a hazmat. There's a niche for you to have another certification of heavy equipment on top. Oh yeah, the um, I forget what the heavy thing is when you have the multi axle group. I'm forgetting the name of that certification, but after you get, I think past might be eight or 10 axles, you have to have, basically if you have a, a triple axle RGN setup and then you have a Jeep behind it, you have to have a cert for that. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, there's a whole world of trucking for cranes. Yeah. So the fact that I have a CDL, I can technically, if I pass the abs VAB, I can just go to mm -hmm. a crane union and do it and just get in just because I have a CDL already. Right. I just got to pass the ASVAB in the schooling and all that other type of shit. And I'll get the crane cert. And then that'll allow me to drive the shit to where it goes. But then there, they're doubling you up again. Because now I'm driving the truck across the road, getting it there. These trucks are like robots. They set up. They come oh. out, they drop down. Then I got to run it for them fuckers and sit there until yeah. they need it. For 10 to 12 hours. If 10 to 12 16. hours. <laughs> And, you know, and, and sometimes these things, they'll they'll hold that bitch there for a week. Oh, yeah. And that means my job this whole week was just sitting here waiting for them to tell me to do what I got to do. And then I'll drive mm -hmm. it back and then it's whatever. And like, oh, well, you know, you'll get, you know, these fuckers are paying thirty eight, forty two dollars an hour. Then you look up that they're charging people four hundred sixty dollars an hour for the thing sitting there. Easily. Easily. It's fucking insane, bro. It's insanity. And it's like every job you have to take, you know, you're getting fucked. Yeah. If that's that's my problem with the shit. Oh, well, you live a decent lifestyle. Yeah, but you dude, you're getting four hundred something dollars a day, an hour. 
and you decided to give me 34 out of that. Trucker Brown here. I'm just here to remind you that we are on Patreon and it does help out the channel. Thanks to all the people who sub to the Patreon this weekend. I appreciate you. New content is coming there. And these clips that I'm giving you are from the exclusive Trucker Report Live that I do with Phil, which is linked at the bottom on Rumble TV Uncut. So I appreciate y'all. Love the support. If you like the content, man, hit the buttons. Let me know. Thanks for coming to the Patreon.